Maya Taylor, welcome to An Actor Who Spares. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I don't say this very often, but when I saw the movie Tangerine, that's one of the few films, I think, since like A Clockwork Orange, where like, I just didn't know you could do that with cinema. The fact that it was shot on an iPhone, how good it looked, how cool it looked, the tracking shots of you guys on Santa Monica Boulevard and just everything that was done. Like Sean Baker, you, like it was, it was, it was, it was a coup that film, you know, like things like that, they don't happen that often. And when they do, you celebrate them. And the fact that that movie did so well at Sundance and then got the Oscar hype, like I was rooting for you and I wanted it. Ah, oh, I just, I worship that film. And anytime I like, I talk to people, I'm like, have you seen Tangerine? And I'm like, we can't talk anymore until you've seen this movie. And then <laughs> now getting to see you in Stage Mother, it's, it's amazing to watch Justice Prevail and you continue to work. Thank you. I like to say I've been pretty blessed with life. Yeah. Um, the whole crew of Tangerine, I still remember it like it was yesterday. Just, it was very hot. <laughs> <laughs> it looked hot. <laughs> and, do and donut time is no more. <laughs> no, it's not. Not anymore. It's very sad. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still there as a building, but not a business. Yeah. But they still do donuts. Do they? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I miss it a lot. That whole area has changed a lot. But yeah, I love Tangerine. It was fun. I would definitely do it again. Well, let's start from the beginning. Did you grow up in North Dakota? No. No. Okay. So the interesting story is that I ended up meeting a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all ears let's go <laughs> and I ended up moving to North Dakota and um at first I wasn't extremely thrilled about it but you know I was like I'm gonna try it out and at the same time I was doing all of my touring for Tangerine just traveling the world and it's different interviews and things all the time um it was kind of a break from that lifestyle you know, I'm doing constant interviews and auditions, yeah. three and four auditions every day. Um, sometimes I'm scheduled to do 22 interviews in one day and two screenings and two Q and A's and 64 autographs. And wow. that was my London trip. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's a lot of work. You know, people yeah. see the glamor of yeah. the life, but it's, it's really hard. Yeah, <laughs> the monotony of it all. Well, how about if, if you don't mind from the beginning, where did you grow up? So I'm from Texas. I was born in Houston, Texas, and I okay. grew up in Richmond, Rosenberg, Sugarland area. And how was that experience? Because that can be kind of a weird, you know. Um, well, at the time, I was still a young boy. Yeah. You know? um, and I was very, I wouldn't say closeted because at school I was open, but at home, I knew not to bring any of that home. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> that experience, I guess you could say I live a double life. A <laughs> double agent, so to speak. Yeah. And, and was that tough then, you know, with the parents? Because I imagine they weren't welcoming to that energy, which is why you had to live the double life. Pretty much. I was more scared. Um, I grew up with my grandmother and my grandfather who was married into the family. And um, I think like he knew and like he would say certain things to me that I didn't like. So me and him, we didn't really get along growing up. And um, I ended up coming out to my grandmother in LA. We had took a trip to LA and I ended up coming out to her. And the next day she just went home. She <laughs> what <laughs> went home, um, but you know, it wasn't that she hated me or didn't love me or anything. It was, I guess, to her, it was more of the fear of my life because of, you know, how she grew up religious and right. that. And so, I mean, I understood it. It was what it was, but I was going to be what I was. Yeah. So. <laughs> you, were, you were fighting to be who you are. And... Yes, and at that time, I came out as a gay guy. Wow. And I transitioned and... until I was 22. Did you know when you were a gay man that that was only the beginning of of the, the butterfly transition, you know, or? Um, pretty much at that time, um, 
I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know what to really think about transitioning because I know that it can be a struggle. Yeah. I mean, there's so much more to this story, but I'm not going to go so deep into that. But I know that there's, there was always the thought of, are you going to be passable? Are you going to be able to pass in the normal life? You know, that's what was on my mind. That's, that's not what should have been on my mind. Yeah. Um, you know, my focus should have been just be yourself and accept who you are and love yourself. Don't worry about what other people think. Um, that's what I would tell any person who's just now starting to transition. Yeah. But at that time, I had that fear of people just knowing, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know what my outcome was going to be as a lady. Yeah. Um, luckily, it turned out to be fabulous. <laughs> yeah, but... it sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, p- parents aside, you know, w- was it hard to come into your own in a state like Texas? I can't imagine that's an easy place. When I was growing up, it was school and home every single day. We were not allowed to have friends over. I didn't go out to the movies or to skating rings or anything like that. It was very much, you know, you get on the bus, you go to school in the morning and have your ass back at this time, you know? (laughs) So that's just how it was. And you had no choice but to make good grades or you get your ass beat. So academia was your life. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And I'm curious with this, you know, being able to be yourself at school and not at home, this Mm -hmm. notion of performativity, did that, did that draw you into like theater, film, TV at all? I was in theater and choir. And the interesting thing is my voice has always been really high. My transition didn't change my voice at all. Um, This is, I've always sounded like this. But um, in theater, I was so good that in two months, they pushed me to theater two. Wow. (laughs) That's amazing. Interesting, fun fact. And then in choir, I didn't sing with the boys because my voice was so high that they put me with the girls. So. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. It's a, a little bit of foresight. That's a, I, I love that. And then <laughs> when, when you were there, I'm curious, at what point do you feel like the idea of performing for a living or even not even for a living, but the idea of like getting up on stage and performing, did that ever kind of come into your soul and be like, this is something I'm interested in? It was something I was very interested in, but you know, um, I thought it would have been hard to get into the entertainment industry. And to most um, people who aren't in entertainment, they would think that it's never gonna happen. You know, only a few people live that life and this and that. And that's kind of how I thought, but then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a star someday. Someday, somebody's gonna know who I am. (laughs) Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't think that it would happen the way that it happened. And, and talk to me about your past. So then when you graduated, where did you go? When I graduated, um, in that month of graduation, which is the month of May, um, we came to LA. It was me, my aunt, and my grandmother and my other aunt, and my brother and sister who are younger than me. Um, I can't do the math right now, but my sister was born in 98 and my brother was born in 99. Okay. Um, I was born in 91. Um, um, I'm 90. Nice. <laughs> yeah, 90. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, I had ended up coming out to my grandmother at that time because my aunt, she was like, Oh, honey, I already know, you know, just tell them. And then you can just stay here and just stay with me. And then that's what ended up happening. And that's how I ended up in LA. Wow. Amazing. And then when you already knew what was going to happen. And, and when you got to LA, did you find, you know, I mean, compared to Texas, did you find that very welcoming and forthcoming as a community? Um, there's so much more to this story. There's a lot more to the story that happened between my aunt and I. But um, I ended up being put out into the streets 
to sell my body to support she and I, and she was my pimp. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what happened. Wow. So I that... know you didn't see that coming, but that's how I ended up in sex work, period. And um, when that happened, you know, I imagine that brought a level of, of, of tension and perhaps resentment between you and your aunt, or was that, no. it was what it was? It was what it was, because remember, all I knew was going to school and coming home. Yeah. And here I am finally opening up my life, you know, as far as who I am to the family. And here she is taking me under her wing. And now it's time to grow up. This is what life is, mm. you know? And that's what I thought it was going to be. I thought that this is the life. This is how it has to be. This is what you do yeah. to survive. Um, because what I did mention is that my aunt is transgender too. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. But growing up with her, I didn't know you know, because she's, she's immensely passable. I remember when I was like five or six years old, I remember her being a boy and we'd be playing or whatever, you know, and then she left for a few years. But when she came back, she was a girl. But oh I didn't think anything of it because I was like eight or nine years old at that time, you know? Yeah. It was like, whatever, you know? Totally. So, yeah. So she introduced me to the life and said, okay, well, this is what it is. Bitch, get out here and make your money. Wow. You know, and at so, this point, had you fully transitioned yet? No. I was a boy in the daytime and a girl at night. Wow. And I'm curious then, because you had to survive, were you able to do any kind of classes or any kind of like, you know, performance for, for you, for, for Maya, for, or it, it was all survival? Living with my aunt, she knew that I could sing. Yeah. And she wanted that life of being a star, you know, because she felt like she had that talent. And I'm not going to say that she didn't, mm -hmm. but I can say that she didn't sound like me, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> <All around. laughs> yeah. So, you know, that really wasn't the focus for a few years. And then eventually she and I ended up moving to Las Vegas where we ended up finally falling out because I got tired of being treated a certain type of way with her. Yeah. And so I ended up moving back to LA on my own with nothing but like $220. I had took the mega bus from Las Vegas back to Los Angeles. And I got a hotel for like four days, like not one of these high-end hotels that you normally see me in now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like $40 a night. And that's, that's what it was. And that started my journey into Maya Taylor. Wow. A few months later, I had went to therapy and everything because I had just been through so much by that point. And then yeah. um, I missed her. I missed my aunt, even though this was the person who didn't really treat me well, yeah. but she was what I knew, you know, she was what I knew to be love. Yeah. And now me and her aren't together anymore. So I went through therapy and everything to try to really get my head back in the game. But all I knew was sex work. That was my hustle. And um, I ended up meeting my best friend, Alfred. And he's like, bitch, why don't you just get a job? You know, you're too young. Cause I was 18. Oh, it's like, wow. you're too young to be out here doing this, you know? And I had applied for all these jobs and everything. And it just, it's hard to get a job in LA, period. Oh yeah, I know. Even if you are a cisgender white man with a master's degree and it's, it's hard to get a job yeah. here in LA. Um, so I ended up doing sex work still. And I started my transition. I had went to Children's Hospital. I got on hormones. And um, well, not at that time. It was like a month later, I started my hormones. Okay. But in that month is when I ran into Sean Baker. Got it. And, yeah. and, and before we jump into Sean Baker, I'm just very curious because, you know, there are a lot of people listening to this podcast that are dealing with identity issues of all kinds. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to skip over the incredible, triumphant, you know, amazing 
persistence and and the ability to stay buoy during dark times like that that you are for those dealing with identity issues how how did you survive how did you not cave to despair how did you not you know like how did you keep going i've always been the type of person where i didn't realize this early on but years later i started realizing this when bad stuff happens to me i don't just dwell on it you know it's like okay it's over i've overcome that it's in the past i'm moving on mm. you know so i guess that's kind of how i did it and also it's like when you're in a bad situation make fun with it you know yeah. like don't let yourself stay down surround yourself with good people yeah. surround yourself with fun people totally. you know kind of like how when we did tangerine i told sean i said i don't want to make this film sad i know that the subject matter is sad but i want people to laugh you know that, because that's why i loved it because it's so yeah. funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so then accurate. that's amazing thank you for answering that and then so talk to me about how you met sean so one day I was at the LGBT center on Santa Monica and McAdam. Mm -hmm. I was dressed in all black. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had like some knee high boots on, some black, very, very tight jeans. I was like a size two at the time. And um, maybe about 158 pounds. Um, I had long black hair with the Chinese bang, these big glasses, these big sunshades and a black leather jacket and a pearl necklace on and a black purse to match, of course. And Sean, I, I could see him in a distance walking around trying to talk to these groups of girls. And then I guess he wasn't getting what he wanted out of them. And he came over, yeah. he talked to me and my best friend, Shanice and Alfred at the time. And he asked us, he was like, so can you tell me anything about this area? I'm, I'm working on a project and this and that. And he's like, I've passed through here and I see so many things that go on, but I really don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked with him down the sidewalk and I introduced myself and I told him, well, let me tell you what goes on over here. <laughs> <laughs> you take him to the car wash? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess like from that moment on he was he was in love with my personality yeah how, how could you not be you're, out you're, there you're so and lovable everything. and he says these are his words he says when I first saw Maya I thought she was a star I and, agree. You know, and I agreed to that because I did look like that, you know, yeah. and I still do. I agree. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to write the whole, the, the whole <laughs> movie. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up having more meetings and we, um, we would meet a Jack in a box. Okay. Is this right why, by there? I guess it was kind of, kind of in the middle of you yeah. know, where he lived and where we hung out and everything. So we would meet a Jack in a box. And I ended up bringing Kiki on to go and talk to him because, remember, I was the youngest out of all of them. Yeah. And they've been out there much longer than me. They can tell him more stories and just more things about the area. So I brought her along and he saw us just, we sat next to each other and she's so opposite from me. Um, okay, I'm not being catty or anything. Yeah. But... <laughs> She's more like, like hood, like hip hop, and this and that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and he saw that and he was like, have you two ever acted before? And see, she had did drama before too. She had did drama in school. Plus she does drag. Oh. Got so, it. you know, she's, she's used to acting and doing all of those things. And she's great with makeup, by the way. Um, and he wanted us to, um, to tell him more stories. And he came back with, with um, like a script, like maybe two and a half weeks later. And he had us read it and we were like, uh, -uh this ain't working. I would never say this. None of these hoes around here would never say nothing like this. Yeah. <laughs> So 
we ended up changing a few things and um, voila, there goes wow. tambourine. Um, so did it end up becoming more of a treatment and you guys kind of improv or yes. was it, 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 it was, it was a full script sort of treatment like though. Got um, it. Yes. In the beginning it was a treatment and then he turned it like the, the full copy into you know, a full script. And we still ended up improving a few things because it's just, you get caught up in the moment and yeah. we're familiar with what that world was. So, yeah. Well, and I, I mean, it's so cool that let alone this artist came in and infiltrated and you guys got close, but you know, when you're shooting a movie on an iPhone, not to sound like a dick, you're shooting a movie on an iPhone. So you may not see that this is going to be an Oscar movie when yeah. you were filming it. Did you, did you see that coming or did you, were you just in it having fun? I was just having fun. Wow. I had no idea, you know, that, and we were getting paid too. Yeah, know? of course. Of co both need I didn't mean to belittle it. I'm sorry. No, 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 not that, not that. Um, I didn't think that. Yeah. Um, but I'm just telling you like the reason why we really, really took it on too is because also we were getting paid Yeah. and we both needed the money. And it's like, okay, bitch, well, we got a job. It's temporary, but we got a job. Do your totally. best. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had no idea that it was just going to be what it was, you know? I didn't think that we would be in theaters or winning all these awards and everything. Yeah. I had no idea. I really just thought that I was just doing a great project and we were both doing something that we loved doing. Yeah. But it ended up working out to be bigger than what any of us could have thought. Completely. And when, when that started to come to fruition, you know, I know there was probably a gap between filming and, and the release, but when all that started to come to fruition, did all of a sudden this feel like, you know, I myself, I, I don't believe in God, but did it feel like destiny in some ways? Like this, this is how it was all meant to happen? I think so. Because when Tangerine happened, my whole life, it just, it changed. It really changed. In this order, I ended up moving permanently to North Dakota because LA was a struggle. Yeah. And here, just like the rent for this apartment, I pay seven ten. Wow. This apartment would probably be about maybe twenty one hundred in for sure Korea, in Koreatown, you know. Yeah. And I have a two stall garage with a BMW sitting in it. Wow. So. You know, it it would just, it would be very, very different in, in LA. Um, but I ended up getting my name and my gender changed. Mm -hmm. I got all of that done immediately because if I was going to be applying for jobs and everything here and trying to go to school for nursing and everything, I needed to make sure nobody knew because I was not having any of that. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'm I'm curious then when when as you did the press tour and as it garnered, did you feel like acting was was your thing, or did you still think like there's some other things that I want to explore? Acting was, it was just it was amazing. It was like a dream come true. But I yeah. also feel like I started to struggle a little bit mentally. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why, because remember I had just started my transition. I didn't know who I was at the time. And here I am on the big screen and all these different theaters. People judge yeah. and people say things that are just not that nice. Yeah. And I was told, stay away from reviews and things. I mean, well, you know, comments, stay away from yeah. comments and stuff. Totally. Like that. Yeah. Um, because even though the comments that I did read were very good, there were always two or three that would be and awful. they live in your brain and you're and just you, oh, you know god and it's like yeah. not the nicest things like for instance when i'm on youtube because i'm on youtube all the time yeah. you know i watch the glam twins i, I love the glam twins or oh. i watch like brandy's channel i love brandy brandy's oh. like she's that's, that's my baby i love her or just just anybody yeah. um like Doug DeMiro, you know. Oh, you like you like Doug DeMiro? I love him. I, I love Doug DeMiro too. 
I just had the, my best friend Denzel Whitaker, who's an actor. Him and I go back and forth talking about Doug. That's mm-hmm. so funny. You love Doug. <laughs> yeah, I love him. And Hoobie's Garage and Vehicle Versions. And what yeah. about Super Clara Blondie? Do you do you like? Yeah, her? I watch her too. Yeah, yeah, she, Super Clara. She yeah. loves BMWs too. BMW, yeah. they're they're my car. Yeah, I've had I've had the Range Rovers. I've had three BMWs, three Mercedes, four Jaguars. I've had all of them, wow. and my favorite is the BMWs. They're so fast, and mine's tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> touche. <laughs> That's amazing. But I guess the point is, like, when I'm on just channels, period. If it's something that I don't like then yeah. just click out of it. Don't say anything mean. Yeah. They work hard on making their content. So why would you bring them down? I mean, just because you don't like it doesn't mean somebody else isn't going to like it. Totally. Or if you feel like maybe you want to give them some constructive criticism, be like, okay, so I like this, but I'd like to also see you do this. Yeah. Um, so that's how you should comment. I'm, I'm very curious, you know, because like as Tangerine, especially as it was getting that Oscar momentum, I imagine you got swooped up by an agency and a lot of things were maybe being tossed your way or ideas were being put in your ear. And the one thing I've learned about Hollywood is like, they either, they want to see you do the same thing 20 times, you know, or, so I'm so curious, like what, what made you, you know, you don't have to name names, but what made you sign with who you signed with and what was interesting to you to, to do next outside of Tangerine before we dig into stage mother? I signed with um, with ICM. Okay, great. And um, the reason why I did, because I met Joanne Wiles, who's my agent at, um, I met her at Sundance. Okay. It was very interesting. We met in this, we met in this huge, we, okay, it was this huge party at this mansion that had like 12 bedrooms and two swimming pools and everything. Oh, entourage style, pun intended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's walking around with her glass of wine. She's like, oh, hey, I don't know, I like you and this and that. And we instantly clicked. Yeah. Um, then I ended up being partnered with Framework, Framework Entertainment with my manager at the time, Alan Mendel. Okay. Um, He's also in my, my um, Spirit Award speech. Oh, the amazing. Where I mentioned my, my manager, and it's kind of a, a hesitation of, oh, but I love you too. <laughs> 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 because Alan and I had like this love-hate relationship because I just, we're not going to go into that, but yeah. he's not my manager anymore. But <laughs> Oh yeah, to say. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. The problem with him, it was that mouth. That mouth is something I could not take. Yeah. <laughs> but now I have Aaron Brown of Avalon Management, and I adore him. He's so sweet. He listens to me. Um, he knows what I want, and he knows what I don't want, and he knows what not to bring my way. Yeah. What I mean by that is. I get a lot of offers to do sex work or some type of victim or, you know, play something like that. When you say sex work, you mean sex work in a narrative? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, we're past that, girl. Come on. (laughs) Ain't no going back to the Ramada. But <laughs> you know, not to bring those things to me. I mean, yes, projects are projects. Projects are going to make you money. But yeah. also, Maya Taylor is a brand now. And yeah. I have other people that look up to me. I can't be out here just filming films about sex work when transgender women are trying to get away from that. Totally. I don't want to keep us in it. So... I'm, 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 while you're bringing that up, I, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Of all the auditions that you've been on in, say, the last two years, how many of them have been just for being a woman? Oh, a lot of them, actually. And oh, amazing. It's not, even, um, it's not even because of the producers of the film. Mm-hmm. It's because Aaron's like, you know what? Let's try this. Because you are a woman. You know, I look the part. I sound the part. Let's give it a go and see what they're going to say. Amazing. So do you think we're, we're getting to the point where trans women will just be seen as women and not, and not you know, 
like in the way Euphoria, not to belittle that show, but it's like, oh, you're playing the trans woman. You know what I mean? By mm, I would love to say that we're getting to that point, but no. It, it takes a name and, and a brand <laughs> to get there. <laughs> and a BMW in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing though but then t talk to me about stage mother you know how did this come your way so Aaron and Joanne got together and normally when I get auditions it's either coming from Joanne or it's coming from Aaron yeah but this time they got together and we had a conference call and I'm like oh my god what did I say what did I do did I do something wrong in an interview or something what was it yeah <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, so we have a project that we want you to look at. And they send me the script and they, um, they tell me, you know, it's going to combine singing and acting and dancing, which I was more nervous about because I haven't danced in years, yeah. you know. But I was excited just by it being singing and acting combined. And I read the script and I love the, the, the subject matter. I loved... Um, I love that it was going to be something different. You know, here I am playing a drag queen, yeah. which is something I have never done before. I was yeah. a little kind of, I just don't know because yeah. I'm a trans woman. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, it would be interesting. And I know trans women who play drag queens. And then I was also thinking, well, let's face it, bitch, you don't have another gig for another year. <laughs> 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 Gotta kill that talk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no. Pandemic, motherfucker. <laughs> With all of that group then, I was like, you know what? Yes. And then they were like, you know, um, the producer wants to, to talk to you. The director wants to talk to you. And we ended up having like um, a phone call, a conference call. That's what it was. It was a conference call. I, th I don't know why I thought it was going to be a Skype meeting, but no, it was a conference call. W were Adrian and Lucy already attached to this or? I don't that... think they were completely confirmed okay. at that time. Okay, got it. Yeah, I think someone else was supposed to be in it. I just don't remember. One of my projects or it's something. That was my computer. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> but somewhere on one of my projects, maybe it was this one where Blair Underwood maybe was supposed to be in it or something. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Um, I ended up flying to Halifax, Canada. And I met everybody. And everybody was just, you know, with open arms. It felt like home immediately. Yeah. Because it's like, all the people from the community are here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> totally. Uh, you know, I, I see um, Alistair over here getting his hair pulled and straightened and this and curled. And like, bitch, that looks like it hurts. But, <laughs> 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 but that's just how it was, you know? Like, there's just wigs and makeup and everything just everywhere. I was like, oh, I'm in heaven. And was that fun in some ways? Because it, it sounds like you kind of missed, uh, or not missed, but you didn't do the, the drag phase. Like, was that fun to, to have that experience? It was. It, yeah. It was fun. I mean, when I first put on that wig, I felt a little, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like my <Tipsy> neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I, I would say the hardest part about it was the platform heels. Yeah because I don't wear platform heels. I wear just regular heels, you know, the heel where it's, it's actually on the floor like this and then there's like a heel back here, you know, yeah. that kind of heel. Um, that was different because as I was walking, it's so hard to like keep your balance, keep your, keep your foot from going like this. As you, it was hard, it was yeah. very hard, especially to be dancing and then you're in these shoes for hours and everything and um, we had me fit it for a corset. We had a corset custom made. And I told them, I said, you know what? I need to be extremely snatched. Because at this time, I was like maybe 40 pounds more than what I am now. Mm -hmm. 
And I just wanted to be small again, you know? <laughs> so the, the costume person, yeah, um, yeah. there were two costume people. I can't remember exactly what their names are, but there was the man. Um, I had him to put his knee into my back and pull those strings as tight as he could to where I could feel my nerves pinching and my spine. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to get through this. <laughs> because I looked good. That's all that mattered to me. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I also want to say here, because I want to give you the credit that you deserve, is that, you know, in 2018, 2019, Hollywood and, and its politics, you know, have moved towards, you know, diversity and, and LGBTQ and all, all the different iterations of, you know, the alphabet. And I think it was you and your film that was the catalyst that started all of that. And none of that that's happening now happened without Maya and Tangerine. And it, and it, it really was that film that started it all. And people maybe not localize it as much yet, but I'm telling you, when the history of books are written, you changed history. And I have so much respect and admiration for you because you're an artist, but you're also just, you're a survivor, you know, and you were able to endure things that most people don't have one one hundredth of an idea of and turn it in to, to comedy, you know, of all yeah. things. And <laughs> I, I, I think that's just so beautiful. And I think that's a lesson, not just actors, but we as humans, we need to hear, you know, because it's, it's how you shape it and it's how you look at it and it's what you make from it that determines who and what your history and legacy will become. So I have such eternal gratitude to you. Aw, thank you. That makes me feel special. Yeah. Well, can you tell <laughs> me what, what, what's next in the pipeline for you? Well, as of now, I still do my day job, which I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I would just go to work and come home every day. I still do auditions. Um, not Has that been often. tough for you, by the way, in the pandemic? It is, because I'm not getting as many auditions that I would normally get. Now, my last audition was probably like two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, normally Same I'm here. getting like two or three auditions in a day. Oh, but wow. also, if I did get a part in something, it's terrifying because a film crew makes up, you know, it's, it's a lot of people that make a yeah. film crew. Yeah. So, Yeah. And do you have any, any projects that are in, like, you know, in post right now, or no. you're, you're still figuring it out? What's next? Age Mother was my last project so far. Okay. <laughs> Not that I'm quitting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was the last project that I did. I was supposed to do another project, but I ended up, um, I don't know what happened with that. Um, it just, things just change. Yeah, totally. And that's this one sure thing in this business. That yeah. And that's Very amazing. disappointing, but yeah. things change. You know, it is what it is. Well, I love that. F final few questions for you. You know, what's keeping you inspired right now during all these, you know, Trump, chaos, Corona, craziness? You know, what, what's keeping your head up? So... Going to work every single day. Um, I work at a nursing home and uh, I take care of maybe about 16 different people every day. Mm -hmm. So I get to see, you know, my people when I come in, they're so sweet and, you know, they're, they're older people. So they've been through a lot and they have all these stories and these crazy personalities. And I'm sorry that I can't mention really any detail because of HIPAA. Yeah, so, of course. <laughs> yeah. But they keep me going. And then also, a year ago, in August, I had filed for divorce from James. And now he and I are back together. So we're going to go ahead and get remarried. Oh. Because he finally got his act together because I wasn't playing that shit. Okay? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking follow up on this motherfucker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check in on you in six months, James. See what's going on. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and, and Maya, for all, for all the people out there listening that, you know, maybe are a little bit confused and, and maybe grow up 
with parents that don't understand and are having a hard time with their identity, what, what, what would you say to them? I'd say take it one day at a time because we don't know everything about ourselves. You learn about yourself every single day. And no matter how old you are, you're still going to be learning new things about yourself. So just take it one day at a time and don't, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. You know, I've always been the type of person where I can do. I don't take no for an answer. Like, for instance, James has this SUV. <laughs> All right, James. <laughs> he, told me, he told me that treadmill would not fit inside that truck. And I said, well, have you tried turning it at this angle? And we got it in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Maya Taylor, I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let's do this again. This was so fun. Yeah. I had a blast. Be be yeah, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow at five. And <laughs> no, for real. Let's do this again. You're you're a true angel, and I'm I I really look up to you so much, and I I I just got so much respect for you and so much love. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. To be continued. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Talk soon. <laughs>